Starfleet has a plethora of starships that play pivotal roles. From the main mission of Starfleet, which is to explore strange new worlds and seek out new life and new civilizations, but also for defense and even during intense times like the Dominion War. So we have to ask, where were all of these ships built in the Star Trek universe? Thankfully, we've had quite an interesting request from one of you watching these videos. This has piqued our interest, for lack of a better word, so thank you. The Federation encompasses many worlds and races, many of whom have their own unique line of ships, such as the Vulcans. So, you, like us, are probably wondering, where do the rest of the Federation ships come from? Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack and let's get into this week's Star Trek Explained. Before we do warp into this video, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. As always, please do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, particularly what starship or location or thing in the Star Trek universe we should focus on next. Who knows, your suggestion may turn into a video for myself or Lieutenant Commander Adam. Okay, engage. We've seen many, many, many races throughout the decades that Star Trek has been on our screens. A handful of these even founded the Federation alongside humanity, including Tellarites, Vulcans and Andorians, all of which had their own vessels which with them to pluck our heroes from the jaws of defeat on many occasions. In the case of the 2150s, when Starfleet was, by comparison, still in its infancy and only just learning to glimpse Warp 5, whilst the others were zipping and hurtling around all kinds of speeds. I'm afraid we're going to disappoint somewhat. There aren't any other Federation race shipyards known, even named in Alpha Canon. We have never been given anything to do with what type of facilities they use, or have at their disposal for the construction of their own ships. So instead, we'll cover the Starfleet ones that we know well and some of those little forgotten ones you may have heard mentioned here or there. It's a shame. It would have been nice to know if the Vulcans utilised the shipyards at Forti Radnae when not needed by Starfleet. I mean, even the Dominion has a canonical shipyard in orbit of Monarch 4. Why has literally no one else been given a shipyard for us to talk about? Come on, modern Star Trek. Now, let's get into a breakdown of the ones we do know, so sit tight. 40 Eridni A Construction Yards, these shipyards were located in the Vulcan system, as another name for the Vulcan system is 40 Eridni, a trinary system with the construction yards around 40 Eridni A, the first star in that system. This shipyard was home of a UAI division, a shipbuilding entity that made ships for Starfleet, and probably for civilian use as well, considering they had offices on Deep Space Nine. The shipyard was responsible for the construction of ships such as the Miranda class at USS Britain, Two Nebula classes, the USS Phoenix and USS Prometheus. Commander Raphael Musica even suggested the shipyard, as well as Beta and Terrors, as an alternative to maintain the Romulus evacuation effort from the supernova, after Utopia Planitia was destroyed in 2385. The Antara shipyard, located in the Bajor sector of the Alpha Quadrant. This shipyard launched our favourite prototype vessel, the USS Defiant, and sister ship, USS Valiant. These shipyards will be fairly recent for Starfleet, with the Cardassian Union only withdrawing from Bajor in 2369. Perhaps the Antara shipyards were Cardassian in origin, much like the Terek Nor, now Deep Space Nine, and could be where the Iridium Ore from Bajor and processed at DS9 would be sent for Cardassian shipbuilding. That would make sense. In the Mirror Universe, they seem to have a further reach much earlier in history than the Prime Universe, as the Terran Empire constructed the ISS Avenger NX-09 at this location. Avenger was one of the many starships destroyed ironically by another USS Defiant, the Constitution Class NCC-1764, during Jonathan Archer's power struggle for Throne of the Empire. Quality episode. The Baganor Cosmodrome was a shipbuilding facility in the Union of the Soviet Social Republics owned by the OCC, and later became a Federation shipyard. We know of at least two starships that came from the Cosmodrome, the SS Mariposa, NAR-7678, and the Orbit class SS Tarvelsky, NCC-53911. The Mariposa was a DY-500 class colony ship, which was an upgraded class of starship as the Botany Bay, which Khan and his followers fled Earth from after the Eugenics Wars. The Orbit class, Esther Tulsgowski, NCC-53911, was encountered by the Enterprise D, adrift her bridge open to space, all hands lost to a virus, and was shortly thereafter destroyed to save the flagship. 
The Baganor Cosmodrome is actually a spaceport operated by Russia and is currently within Kazakhstan and was where both Sputnik was launched as well as Vostok 1, the rocket that made cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin the first man in space. Ok, so the Beta Antara shipyards were located in the Antara sector and were different from the Antara shipyards but what is startling if not confusing about naming schemes. The highly classified experimental USS Prometheus NX59650 or 74913, again Starfleet being confusing about naming schemes, was launched from this very shipyard in 2378, then promptly stolen by the Romulans before being recovered by two emergency medical holograms. The Copernicus shipyards were a shipyard construction facility at Luna, the moon of Earth in the Sol system. The Constellation class USS Hathaway NCC2593 was one of the vessels constructed under the auspices or support of the Uriodyne Division. Lunar Shipyard, a facility which unsurprisingly was in the Sol system in the vicinity of Luna as well. A functioning shipyard as early as the mid 23rd century which constructed the Antares class freighter SS Zosa, which in 2370s which would be captained by Cassidy Yates. In an alternate 23rd century, the United Earth Fleet Enterprise was constructed and launched from lunar shipyards, commanded by United Earth Fleet Captain James C. Kirk in 2259. Another moon-based shipbuilding facility was Tranquility Base, which was located at Mare Tranquilitas or Sea of Tranquility. In 1969, it was the first site of the first human moon landing by Apollo 11's Lunar Module Eagle. By the 23rd century, a shipyard was located there, and among those constructed was the Constitution class USS Defiant NCC 1764. Her sister ship, USS Excalibur NCC 1664, was also commissioned here. In the Mirror Universe, the ISS Discovery was constructed in that universe's equivalent of the base. This was also the case for the ISS Shenzhou. Ok, Deep Space 5, which was a regular one-type deep space station, operational in the late 24th century into the 25th century, located near the Ivor star system, which was home to the Federation colony on Ivor Prime. In an alternate quantum reality, visited by Worf in 2370, DS5 was responsible for a new starship development and object of a covert surveillance by the Cardassians, along with Starbase 74 and the Indara colony, and the Utopia Planitia fleet yards. It is unknown whether Deep Space 5 was also responsible for Starship developments in the Prime Reality. Ok, McKinley Station. By the way, let me know in the comments if you remember where this station is mentioned, it's pretty obvious. Also known as Earth Station McKinley, it was in service in the late 24th century. The docking facility located in Earth orbit was designed for Starship construction, refitting and maintenance layovers. The Enterprise D was transferred there from Utopia Planitia shortly after its launch in 2364, before its departure to Farpoint Station. It was where Captain Picard took command of a new flagship. In 2367, the Enterprise D underwent a major refit of the station following the Borg incursion. It was estimated to last 6 weeks. Marin County Starfleet Yards were a number of shipyards located in the Sol Sector, with surface facilities in Marin County in the San Francisco Bay Area. The USS Pasteur was built in the shipyards by the Skywalker Division. Good one, I know, right? The Skywalker Division is named in tribute to Industrial Lights and Magic based at Skywalker Ranch, Marin County, California, founded by none other than Mr. George Lucas. ILM had done numerous VFX works for the Star Trek franchise, including nine of the movies and some work on the series. This is why Millennium Falcon appears in Star Trek First Contact and R2-D2 himself in Star Trek 2009. Oakland Shipyard was mentioned in the alternate future timeline where it took Voyager 23 years to return home. In 2404, Reginald Barclay and former decorated Admiral Catherine Janeway, who wasn't intent on altering the timeline, that her shuttle, SC-4, was ready at the Oakland Shipyard. Whether this shipyard existed in the Prime timeline is not known. Riverside Shipyard, in the Kelvin timeline, was a ground-based Starfleet Shipyard 2-1A, located in Riverside, Iowa, Earth. The construction zone was under the SFC Division, United Federation of Planets, Sector 47. It was considered a maximum security zone. Intruders could be met with lethal force. Yet James Kirk just sauntered up on his bike, tossed his keys to a dock worker and walked aboard a shuttle. In the mid-2250s, the USS Enterprise was constructed at the Riverside Shipyard. The shipyard was also an embarkation point from where Starfleet cadets would travel to their training facilities. Although constructed at Riverside, the Enterprise was launched from San Francisco Fleet Yards in 2258. 
Speaking of which, San Francisco Fleet Yard, located in Earth's orbit, with planetside offices located in the city of San Francisco, supplemented by an orbital office complex near the dry docks of the yard. The USS Franklin was launched from his yard sometime before 2151, and the USS Shenzhou likewise sometime before 2249. The prime timeline USS Enterprise was launched from his yards in 2245, with Robert Abel being stationed there until its components were being built. In 2250, 2285, 2286, 2333, 2367, and 2373, the starships US Discovery, Excelsior, Enterprise A, Stargazer, Sutherland, and Enterprise E, respectively, were all launched from these yards. It is possible that the Protostar class of starships were constructed at the San Francisco shipyards, as this class was seen in construction and docked at Starfleet Academy in San Francisco. So whether these were different shipyards, perhaps more industrial ones for engineering students at the Academy, who knows. The University of Copernicus, a Federation shipbuilding facility with a Wells class USS Relativity, NCV-474439 G, was constructed in the 29th century. This facility isn't specifically mentioned on screen, however it is on the dedication plaque for the vessel, spotted by keen-eyed fans. The University of Copernicus is obviously named after Nicholas Copernicus, the polymath, but as to where this university could be located, we don't know. There is a possibility that if it is based on the moon, or it's maybe twinned or even part of the pre-existing Copernicus shipyards, with one of the lunar craters being called Copernicus. I just think adding another shipbuilding facility to Luna would kind of be great at this point. Okay, talking about 29th century Starfleet shipbuilding facilities, we have to mention the 32nd century and the Archer Space Dock. Archer Space Dock was symbolic of a reopening of Starfleet almost a century in defence after the events of the burn. The Space Dock was located at Federation headquarters and was built to not only upgrade pre-burned Starships, perhaps utilising the new pathway drives which were designed to lessen the Federation's reliance on dilithium, but also construct new vessels for Starfleet. Archer Space Dock was named after Jonathan Archer, the pioneer who basically built the Federation, so who bared to honour as a symbol of rebuilding a Federation in the 32nd century. With Federation HQ moving into orbit of newly rejoined Federation member homeworld Earth, later in 3190, whether Archer Station will be towed to Earth or kept in deep space is unknown. Okay, we're going back to the main one, back to the 24th century. We are now at the one we've all been waiting for, the most mentioned in all of Star Trek, Utopia Planitia Fleet Yards. One of the key Federation construction and design facilities of the 24th century. These were several large drafting rooms for Starship design, planetary facilities on the surface of Mars, as well as a number of orbital dry docks and space stations. Utopia Planitia held the Galaxy-class development project, including the majority of ship construction, design, and system model tests based out of Drafting Room 5. Then-Lieutenant Commander Benjamin Sisko was assigned to work at Utopia Planitia sometime after the Battle of Wolf 359, where he assisted in the design work and flight tests of a prototype of a Defiant class, USS Defiant NX-74205. The USS Voyager underwent her final construction phase and while still in dry dock, is visited by the first time Captain Catherine Janeway. 2385 saw the yard supported by a number of shuttlecraft and tri-high stations, including tri-high station A19. These stations supported the general shipbuilding operations of the shipyard and weren't just operated by a normal workforce, but also by synthetic labour units such as the A500 unit. The vast number of iconic and prestigious vessels were deployed, refit and or built at Utopia. These included, but by no means limited to, USS Fredrickson, an Excelsior class, a handful of Galaxy class ships including the USS Galaxy, Yamato, Enterprise D and Odyssey, Nova class USS Equinox and its big sister Intrepid class USS Voyager, USS Defiant and Sao Paulo. Of course, we know it was only where the Defiant was developed. She was officially launched from the Antares shipyards. The Ambassador class Enterprise C was also built at these yards, as seen on her dedication plaque. A large number of other unnamed starships, including Saber, Steamrunner, Akira, and Magee class starships, were also part of the aforementioned scenarios at this location, as seen in the panning shots of the yards. Notable name personnel that were stationed at Utopia Planitia include Leah Brahms, who we all know. She is considered a leader in warp field theory and made major contributions to the development of the Galaxy class engines. Charles Tripp Tucker III was stationed there prior to his assignment aboard Enterprise NX-01. And of course, Benjamin Sisko, where we all know why he was there. The Defiant. Alas, the distinguished Utopia Planitia was ultimately destroyed on first contact day, 
5th of April 2385. A cabal of Tal Shia operatives known as the Jat Vash had hijacked the A500 synth personnel, who had been deactivated the defense grid over Mars and destroyed the shipyards. The ensuing explosions ignited the planet's atmosphere in the process, which remained ignited until at least 2399. Certainly, some of these had a little bit more information to work with. Of course, it would have been nice to do a series of breakdowns on them individually, as opposed to cramming them all into one video, but unfortunately we're not privy to such information. Maybe one day we can return to them with some expanded information as Star Trek continues to be on our screens. If you reach the end of the video here and you're still with me, hello, but also comment Defiant X1 in the comment section, or just Defiant. Of course, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from a team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Jack, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper my friends. Goodbye.